Hello fiber friends and welcome to this space where we chat about spinning and knitting and knitting with our hand spun, sometimes knitting with commercial yarn, but mainly spinning, knitting with what we've spun, spinning different fiber props, different types of fiber and all that fun stuff. My name is Kristen. You can find me on Instagram as Stitch Vintage, same as YouTube. And there I just kind of share more like in the moment, what I'm working on, what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, all of that. So, um, welcome. If it's your first time viewing, this is a bonus episode, bonus vlog. So I tend to record, I've missed a lot this year, but once a month, just a recap, what I'm spinning, thoughts on what I'm spinning, what I'm knitting, all of that. And, um, we have to talk about Tour de Fleece and my thoughts and what I spun and all that. So I figured we would just have a one video where we just talk about Tour de Fleece. I spun through a lot of braids, so I thought it might be nice to have like one video where we're talking about braids and just maybe share my thoughts on looking at them, managing them, splitting them, um, having an idea of what that final yarn will be once we've split it and all that fun stuff. So without further ado, let's go into Tour de Fleece. So Tour de Fleece runs throughout July. It depends. Some people just do it while Tour de France is happening. So the first through the 23rd, some people do it the entire month. So they include Tour de Femme too. Um, it's up to you. There's no hard, fast rules unless you're on a team that has like hard and like fast rules that you have to stick to. I didn't join a team this year, um, mainly because I had a late start. I did not start my Tour de Fleece until July 5th. Uh, we were on vacation and I forgot that Tour de Fleece was starting. So I had my spindles and I had spun like while we were gone, those first five, four days, but it wasn't intentional. Like I wasn't intentionally spinning for Tour de Fleece. So I didn't count those. Um, it wasn't until we got home and then I realized, hey, that's starting. It was already the fifth. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna make a goal and we're just gonna run with it. And my start date will be the fifth. Again, there's no rules. I guess I probably could have counted the spindling, but for me, I felt it was unfair. All right, so my goal was to spin through 50 ounces of fiber on my wheel. Um, that was like my main goal. We hit it. My sub goals were to practice my long draw and um, be intentional about trying to spin a bit thicker with certain spins. Um, so we hit it 50 ounces. That's 1,417 grams, I think. I converted that. Um, I may have rounded it. I don't know. And here are all of my finished skeins of yarn. So pretty. So I thought we could go through them, share some thoughts. Um, first the stats of all the yarn. So singles, the singles that went through the wheel, like the total meterage for just the singles was 8,527 meters. And then plied yarn, so it's not like, it's before soaking. So off the wheel, onto the skein is when I measured that. This is my little meter counter here. Um, so plied yarn, almost finished. We have 3,583 meters, which translates to, my eyes are bad. Um, yards, 3,918 yards, which gives me a grand total of everything put through the wheel, my singles, and then plying those singles, everything through, that's a grand total of 12,110 meters or seven and a half miles, or if you're not from the States, 12.11 kilometers. Um, so it was a lot of spinning. I think I wouldn't have felt as overwhelmed as I did, which I mean, who 
I put it on myself. Like I could have stopped. It wasn't a big deal. Um, if I would have started on the first, I feel like it would have been a much more relaxing tour de fleece if I started on the first, but I didn't. So, and I was determined to get through all 50 ounces. And we did. And next year I'll remember to start on the first. Okay. So I'm going to set this down here and then we will grab some out and talk about it. So the first one I spun was this. This was dyed by Wolfine. This was an experiment. I think this was a new to her base at the time. I don't know if she still carries it. This is 80% South American wall, 20% viscose, viscose, viscose. Um, and it's Tweety, like the, that viscose is like the Tweety bits. Are we going to focus? So the, there's a lot of nets in this one. I spun this long draw, um, with the goal to spin a bit thicker, which we did. This is like a heavy, heavy DK. Um, those Tweety bits made it hard. I feel for long draw. Um, they kept getting like tangled up and, uh, just, I, it wasn't a nice experience, if I'm being honest. I think it would have been easier um, if I would have just spun like my like natural way of spinning, um, which is like a continuous back, um, maybe kind of smoothing as we go with all those naps. It may have been easier. I don't know. Did I say the name of this? She didn't name it because it was an experiment. It is her experiment 009. Right? Yes. Um, and I like the gray base and I really like, it's like a, I don't know, limey yellow green and purple. Um, and I think it turned out really nice. I like the colors on the gray. I don't know what we'll knit with it. Uh, it's very muted. I like it. I think it's pretty. Um, and I just spun this again, long draw. I, I had eight ounces. I spun it to six bobbins and then three and three to make, well, I need three skeins of yarn. Total meter inch is 365 meters for eight ounces. It's a very heavy yarn. That's where all my yardage went. If I would have spun this normal, I would have had way more yardage. Okay, moving on. What do we want to talk about next? This is Mesa, Mesa. I'm just pulling out my notes. I don't have, just spin thicker is the only notes I have. Um, we spun this at a ratio of 1 to 15. This is Superwash BFL. What is that? 80% Superwash BFL, 20% nylon. This is dyed by Greenwood Fiberworks. Um, and this has been in my stash for a long time. I liked it, the colors on the braid. It was very blocky. It was like a block of blue, a block of the um, like rusty orange, and then a block of something else. I don't know. I can't remember now. I think I have a photo of my Ravelry. I'm like my yarn st or fiber stash. Um, but it just sat there cause it wasn't like calling to me and I was just like, Oh, I don't really, but you guys, it's so pretty. Okay. So I took this braid and I split it in half to make a two ply, right? Don't get that wrong. Yes. So we made a two ply, um, goal to spin it a bit thicker. That is why my ratio is down, um, to one to 15. I find the higher my ratio, the thinner I spin, the lower my ratio, the thicker I spin. Um, so we put this down one to 15. Um, and you can see, um, well, maybe if we undo it. So I've talked before, like going for that spin cycle yarn, um, a lot of people will do a fractal spin and how they are not my favorite. Um, I'm not a fan of the fractal spin because it tends knit up. It tends to be too busy. Um, I, there's too much 
color changing, I guess. I like, I don't know. I, I don't know. Go back and watch previous episodes. I talk about it a bit in there. Um, but this kind of shows you why. Because even though I took it and I spun, like I split it in half, like all the way down the roving, and they were pretty much mirrored all the way down, and I spun end to end and end to end and then plied, you can see that we still have the barber pulling. Like you can see where like the blues still match up and then there's some barber pulling and then you can see where like the oranges still match up. Um, you still have that like movement of color and I just find that they tend to mimic like a traditional two ply or three ply tends to mimic when knit up a spin cycle yarn more than a fractal spin does in my opinion um I like this BFL is not my favorite to spin um it's not as grabby I like a real grabby um fiber to, to spin it's just I don't know I prefer it so with the fact that this is super wash and it's BFL and it's got nylon it was very smooth to spin um but it spun up nice I like it and the total meterage for this was 204 meters for four ounces so pretty heavy we spun thick okay moving on let's talk about this this is banshee fiber arts she does not name her colorways this is her colorway number 119 um and it was mainly white so there's a lot of white and then splotches of the pinks and the blues uh i have so much pink fiber even though I don't think I own a pink shirt of any kind. Uh, so we'll see what we knit with this. I have a mini skein here. So where are we at? This was a three ply, uh, traditional three ply. So I split the braid into three separate strips, spun each to a bobbin, plied it up, and then I had singles left over. And that is these, and we chain plied these. So you can see there was no, none of like the dark pink left over at all. This, it's all in here. All we had was kind of whites and lighter pinks and blues. And you can see like the difference. Um, so for the two ply, we got 245 meters and the three ply, 52 meters. Um, so this will probably just go into my, I have a whole bin of like, my chain plied leftover singles and I don't know what I'll do with them but we'll add that to that okay moving on what are we gonna pull out next well if we're talking about pink we've got to talk about blushuous which is dyed by Beth at Spindelicious um I love her colorways this one's so pretty it's got like purples and pinks and peach and it's just really nice so where's the stats on this so we've got this is a two ply so this is on her spin skinny base which is a super wash merino um and it's basically like pencil roving it is not super super wash so like it this her spin skinny super wash will still felt um, like you can, and I have, um, like spit spliced the yarns together. So it's still grabby. Uh, maybe it won't felt as easily as like a super fine merino wool, but it will still felt, which I feel like, I mean, there are super washes that will, but just out of all the super wash I've spun, this is my favorite because it is so grabby. It fluffs up nice, like it's got a nice like hand, a lot of like like spring and spring to it. I love it. Um, so I took the pencil roving 
like found the middle point and broke it in half. Like I didn't split it down the middle because it is so long. Like that would have been a nightmare. I just broke it in half at the midway point, spun to a bobbin, spun to a bobbin, plied them together. And this is what we got. Um, so two ply, chain plied. What's the meter edge on this? So the, did I share that? I don't know if I did. The two ply is 187 meters and the three ply was 79 meters. So it happens sometimes you just have singles left over. And I tend to either chain ply them or if I'm doing a two ply and it's not a ton ton, I will just uh, do a bracelet ply and ply that two ply onto the yarn to finish that yarn. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Okay. Next is one of my favorites that I spun. This is Duskwood. Look at that yarn. It's just so pretty. So Duskwood is dyed by Wolfine again. Uh, where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at? Okay. Yep. And this is a Falkland Merino. Now I have 30 pounds. I have a 30 pound bump of Falkland. <laughs> Don't ask me why. And I use it to practice with, um, like sample and like practice certain things. That's like my main use. I got it to like dye and do all this stuff, but we're not there yet. I still have so much. I think I have like 28 pounds still or more, <laughs> 29, not used that much of it. Um, but the beginning of this year or last year, I wanted to practice spinning over the fold. And when I want to practice something and I don't want to use precious fiber, I will pull from that bump. And I've spun tons of different ways with that fiber. And each time, while it was good practice, I hated the finished yarn. It was overspun. It was underspun. It was like not nice. It wasn't good. I, I could not figure out nice yarn to make from it, which was a little frustrating because I'm like, I have 30 pounds of this. So I spun it over the fold and it made the most glorious yarn. And I was like, jackpot, that is how I'm going to spin this whenever I do. I have plans, maybe playing with diver, dye, diver, dyeing fiber a bit. Um, but more or less is spinning it and then taking that finished yarn and dyeing it for a project. Like that's kind of my next, I mean, I have a lot of plans, but, um, so anyways, spinning it over. So I knew spinning Falkland over the fold that I liked the yarn that came from it. So when I pulled out Duskwad and saw that it is Falkland, I was like, I'm spinning this over the fold. Now, I was a little nervous because the thing with dyed fiber is a lot of times one like one set staple length will have multiple colors, at least two, um, which can muddy things when you're spinning over the fold. Um, so I was worried that we were going to get a lot of muddying and that it would not turn out to be a nice yarn, but you guys. At how pretty this yarn is. So obviously, yes, lots of barber pulling happening. Um, but also spots where things are matching up. It just turned out so pretty. So you can see the purples, the blues, the greens. I really love this yarn so much. It's like squishy. Um, so we spun this long draw over the fold. Um, we got in total 613 meters and, um, I love it. So if you're wondering if you can take a, you know, dyed braid and spin it over the fold, you can, and you will get really pretty, pretty yarn from it. I love this. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it's going to be something really pretty. Uh, so yeah, over the fold. 
And the only reason why I chose over the fold is because it was Falkland because I knew that I like what Falkland wool looks like spun over the fold. And I'm very happy with that decision. Moving on. Um, and it's a two ply. I said it's a two ply, right? So I spun, I split it. I, I had two braids, so eight ounces. So I took one braid, split it in half, set one aside, and then took the next one and split that in half again. Just went end to end, end to end. That was one bobbin. Grabbed the next one um, and continued and then did a two ply. Make sense? Okay, okay. All right. This is very fun. This is, I'm not going to say this right. Dawkus Noir. Dawkus Noir. Um, this is dyed by, again, Beth at Spindelicious. This is her big cozy sock. Where are we at? Where are we at? Um, yes, her big cozy sock base. Um, so I was chat, we were chatting back when she was looking for a sock base and she wanted something that's going to have like stretch for the sock but also like strength um, and without using nylon. So she did 80% Targi, 10% bamboo, 10% Tessa silk. Um, and you guys, it's so pretty. Um, like it's so pretty that I'm like, do I really just want to make socks with this? I do because I want to see how it holds up. Um, to the sock wear with that bamboo and Tessa silk in it. Um, but it's just so pretty. So pretty. Okay, where, where's this one? I don't have it on here. Yes, I do. 358 meters and it's a two ply. Um, and it, that Targi is very squishy. Um, so this, again, I just split the braid in half, spun end to end. I may have split it even further. I can't remember now. Did I write it down? Nope. Just that it was a default to ply continuous back. And it's, I mean, look at it. So nice. All right, next up was a combo spin, which doesn't even really look like a combo spin because it matched so nicely. This is two. So they were both dyed by Jen at Wee Chickadee. Love her colorways too. I love all the dyers colorways. Um, so one ply is spring fever and that is Targi and the other ply is wisp, which is Polworth. Surprisingly not Polworth in silk. Um, but they were very similar. One braid had a bit more yellow to it. And then the other, like they were both green, like mainly green. And then one of the braids had a bit more yellow and the other braid had a bit more brown, but they were very similar. I do have a picture on Instagram of like the two fibers if you want to look. And this is what we got. It turned out so nice. Um, I really like it. I was afraid that yellow was going to be way too yellow, but it really, I think the brown really kind of toned it down because it's nice right okay so this is a two ply um yep no plans for it i do think that this would make nice um contrast color in a color work sweater i was actually thinking so i pulled out my illuminate we're going off track a bit 
and I have all of this. Now this is itchy on my neck. It's not itchy anywhere else. It was just like the collar for this sweater was too much. We talked about that in the last episode. So I was thinking I could do the open glow because that has a different color neck. If I use this and then that underneath and then this is my main color and this is the color work, right? It'd be so pretty. <laughs> it's all falling. Anyways, we'll chat about that later as I figure it out. Um, so spun with no plans, but I do think that that would work out. I have more than enough yarn of this for that sweater. So we'll see. How much do we have? Uh, 587 meters of this combo spin. So if you're wondering, can I do a combo spin with like different wools? Absolutely. Targi and Polworth works. I've also done BFL as a ply and Cormo as one ply. Applied together. Beautiful yarn. Probably one of my most favorite yarns I've ever spun in it with. Okay, next up is another colorway by Beth that's been delicious. This is her Ivy and Wine and you guys look at oh come on focus. Oh no you gotta focus. Look at that. It is just so pretty. <gasps> so pretty. Okay. Ivy and Wine. Where are you at? So this is Cormo and I split the braid in half horizontally. So her Cormo, nine mile Cormo is the base um, from Spin Delicious. And it is very much like a, um, I have the word because I've said the word, um, pencil roving, there it is. Um, so it's a very long, it's thin and it's very long. So I just found the midway point like I did with the um, spin skinny, broke it in half, spun to a bobbin, spun to a bobbin, and we did a two ply. Um, hey you guys, it's so good. So this is for the Spark cardigan. That's what I got this for. And I do have another braid to show you because I did have eight ounces of this. So you can see what the fiber looks like. So from this to this. It's so good. <laughs> um, and then let's see, can I find an end? So you can see like what I mean by it's like super skinny. If you've not spun the Cormo, oh, it's so do, 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 do. All right, so you can see, like it's very thin, um, which is nice. You literally can just start spinning. There's no management needed. It's the softest. Oh, I'm really happy with this yarn, if you can't tell. It's been in my stash for a while. I've been coveting it. I knew I wanted to do it as my contrast color for the Spark cardigan. Um, and now I just have to spin this and then spin my main color and lots of big plans. Okay. Next up, we've only got a couple more. We're at 30 minutes. Okay, good. Wrapping up. This was an experiment. So this is a colorway. Gladiator um, by Spin Delicious again. Um, four ounces. I didn't have eight ounces of this. Um, but I wanted to see what happens if I take a braid and um, sorry, I was getting a text. Put it through the drum carter and just to see. Uh, so I again, I do have a photo on my Instagram that shows the bat that I made and then um, the like uh, fiber, the top. Um, and so I split it in half 
I ran it through the drum carter twice, pulled it off, and then um, zigzag like stripped it down for like one long piece of roving, and then spun it. Did I write how? Yeah, continuous back. I spun them both continuous back. Now, let me resituate myself really fast so I can hold them up. So this was the bat that I made on the drum carter, and then this was just spun um, like normal. And you can see the difference. So you can see on the bottom is the bat, and it is very, um, let me see if I can move myself, very muted compared to the one on the top. The one on the top, you can see a lot of barber pulling. Um, I like them both. I spun this one first and I was like, I was really debating about putting the other half through the drum carter because I just really like this. I really like this blue. Um, it's just so pretty. But then I was like, well, I want to have something to compare it to. If I don't have something to compare it to, we'll never know. So that's why we did this. And to be honest, I love this one too. It's so hard. They're so nice. I think if I wanted a sweater, like no color work, no, just a complete sweater, I would go for this because I don't like the striping in a sweater, like that hand spun striping look. I'm not a fan in like a full using that yarn for a sweater. I love that in like the color work portion, but not so much in the sweater, like a full garment. So I, if that was my plan, I would put it through the drum carter. So we have more of a uh, like semi, semi solid. Why is that a hard word for me? Um, but if I wanted something for color work, more like a spin cycle type yarn, then I would be going for this because, oh man, it's so pretty. I like the barber pulling. Um, I like that it's matching in some spots and not in others. Okay, so this is Gladiator. So one of them, I didn't write which one. Oh yes, I did because they're on here. 207 meters is what we got for the one that was just the top. And then 182 for the skein that we put through the drum carter. So again, I'll just share these two. So now you have kind of an idea. Like if you were thinking, what happens if I put it through the drum carter? And again, you can see on my Instagram, like you can go and look and see what the actual braid look itself looked like. You can also look Spindelicious on her website. Like she has all of her colorways. So you'd be able to see that too. Um, I don't think I said this was BFL. So obviously not my favorite, but I really like the yarn it made. So pretty. I really love this one too. <laughs> If anyone who doesn't spin is watching this, you're probably super confused as to why I'm so happy <laughs> about yarn. All right, and this is the last one. I've had this in my stash for so long. I didn't, did I? Oh, I don't think I made a card for this. I didn't. So this is Watermelon Sangria. Uh, created by LCB is the dyer and it is 80% super fine merino, 20% cashmere. And you guys, it is the softest yarn I've ever spun. Um, so I spun this. How did I spin this? Give me a second. This was the last one I spun. I should remember, but I didn't take any notes. Um, I don't think I posted about it. Um, 
I think I know how I spun it. I just want to make sure. Okay. Yes. So I slit this braid in half and I have the braid, the other half of the braid to show you. So you can see this will make a very stripey yarn. Um, I split it in half and then I set one half aside and then I took one of the halves. <laughs> words, Kristen, words. And I split that into three. And then I spun each to a bobbin and then I made my three ply. And you can see there is, there is some barber pulling, but not a lot. And I'm going to show you why. So, excuse the crinkling. This is the other half. So you can see we have very long repeats. So I split this in horizontal. So the other half, this half that I spun, like it kept going, we got here and then it repeated. So, well, I actually went this way. So the green to the peachy pink, to the darker pink, to the purple, and then it went green, to that peachy pink, to darker pink, to dark pink, to purple, done. So I found the midway point, I broke it in half. I slit this into three even-ish sections, spun them each, plied them up. This is a very, like this is all green. Um, and so you can see like there's not much chance of this pink getting into this green until we get down here. And that's where a tiny bit of barber pulling is going to happen. Um, and then again, even down here, there's only a small area where these are going to mix. And then even plying them together, there's so much green and then so much pink and then the dark pink to the purple. It just doesn't allow. Now, if I wanted these color repeats to go more, so when I knit this up, it will go green to that light pink all the way down to the dark and then we will end on the purple. If I wanted it to be like moving faster, like more self-striping, quicker, I would have broke it down further. Like I would have pulled it apart. And so instead of taking, so I took this braid, use words, explaining is not my forte. So I broke, took this, broke it into three and then spun those each to a bobbin. If I wanted that repeat to happen faster, then I would have broke it into three, set them aside, taken that first one, broke it down again and possibly again to have four, spun those four end to end onto a bobbin and then done the same exact thing with the second piece. Broke it into two or four or three or however you do it, spun end to end and so on. So then when I plied them together, we would not have such long areas of the green and long areas of the pink. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Okay. Oh, and then this was just left over um, from that uh, like Tweety yarn. And then this is left over. This actually didn't go towards my meter edge because I just, I don't know why I didn't count it. I kind of forgot about it. But this was the combo spin, like just left over. And usually when I have like little bits like this, I will put them in here. There's tons of little bits. Um, and I use them as ties. Like when I'm skating my yarn, that's where I get my little like yarn ties from. I should put them in there. Okay. Um, that is Tour de Fleece this year. Hopefully you feel inspired to pull out some of your braids and get started. Um, this is my next on my wheel. Um, and I thought I would just share how I'm going to split it. So you can see lots of colors. This is 
Rambouillet, which is like one of my favorites because it's so sticky and grabby. Um, so I will probably do a three ply and you can see the color repeats compared to this. Like you can see like green comes all the way down to here. Oh, there's, I'm like, why is there blue? There is a bit of blue in here. The green comes all the way down to about here. And look, we've got so, in this one, you have several colors in that span. So I'm gonna open this. So when you get it and you unbraid it, like it kind of looks like, oh, like it's a piece of roving. It is, it is not. Like this is actually one big fat piece. Like if you unfold it, it gets pretty wide. So I will kind of pull that out and look and then figure out, okay, if I break it into thirds, how are we going to do that? So it's as even as possible. So I kind of start I'm like, okay, that's about into thirds. I don't weigh anything. And then I just start like stripping it down. So I'll do the one. And then when I get to the end, I tie a little knot. So I know this is the end. And then I pick this back up from the other end. I go strip the rest of it. I tie a little knot so I know that's the end. And I keep those knots there until I'm spinning. So I know which end. And I know, I always, like the knot means it's the end. Does that make sense? And so I just do that. And then I would pre-draft it out a bit, especially this, because it's, so sticky and then we would just start see that like opened it up and then we would just spin to three bobbins and then we would ply together um that's what I'm gonna do all right, if you have any questions about like managing color or braids or just questions in general, feel free to leave them below. Um, and follow me on Instagram because when I do a spin and chat, I post like the day before, I'll put up a question box to get some of your questions. Um, and you can ask them either spot in the comments, on Instagram, in the box when I post it, whatever you want. So. Happy spinning. I hope you're having a good start to August. I hope your July was amazing. You're going to have an amazing August. And I will chat with you guys next time.